whenever there's a change, I think it always brings good and bad. The good side is that yes, there's more money for independent filmmakers because it means that there's more outlets and there's more opportunities for independent films to make their money back. And properly speaking, everything is an independent film now. I mean, you know, I, people talk about the studios, but the studios are basically these kind of, you know, repositories of capital. Everything else is independent. I mean, if you're talking about a Paul Thomas Anderson film, for instance, that's independent, more or less. In this modern market, or I don't even know the market, in this modern context, it's increasingly hard to have like complete freedom. And I feel like Netflix and Amazon and these studios are giving filmmakers unprecedented amounts of liberty. And I think that as a filmmaker, you know, I don't work in the kind of budgets that like, you know, Bong Joon-ho works at, you know, but like for someone like him to get, like he was saying, to get that much money, to have complete creative freedom, if he's willing to sign away the theatrical experience to have that kind of freedom, like that's a decision I certainly respect. The downside, I think, is that it gives people less of an opportunity to see their films shown on a big screen, and it also tilts things aesthetically more in the direction of mastering the image for the small screen rather than the big one. I think if I were to make a bigger film, and you know, I was confronted with the choice of having freedom and time and sacrificing the theatrical versus you know, having less time, more constraints with being in the cinema, it would certainly be something to look at for me. And for some filmmakers, it's a little terrifying to think that their movies are mostly going to be seen on small screens, that that's now the primary delivery system. We think about the cinematic experience. We think about cinemas. We think about the big screen. We think about film. We don't make it TV safe yet. You know, maybe that's irresponsible. It probably is. But um, at least for now, we're still conceiving of these films as cinematic experiences. I don't think it's easy to just say it's good or it's bad. I think that, you know, there's no, in my mind, substitution for the theatrical experience. I mean, there's something to be said when, you know, you sit in a room with everyone and everyone's sharing that collective experience, gasping at the same time, laughing at the same time, you know, if the film's playing well. You know, there's something about that shared experience of sitting with people in a theater, which is the basis through which, like, the, the cinematic language was written. But, you know, that said, I have a big TV, I have, you know, a projector, there's no cinema in the town where I live, um, so I appreciate streaming. I don't see the theatrical experience going away anytime soon, I just see it changing. And it's good news for film festivals, because, and that's why there are so many of them, because it means that they become an alternate source of distribution. Because the other side of the VOD experience, of course, is that like shopping on Amazon, you have to know what you want. There is no such thing as physical browsing. So, you know, film festivals give people an array that's curated and they're able to look and say, oh, that looks interesting, I'll go see this and that and the other. I mean, we opened the New York Film Festival last year with a Netflix film and it was uh, streaming on Netflix a week later. Um, and it was a documentary about the prison industry by Ava DuVernay. No matter what, for these films that we make, the amount of exposure they get from this festival, no matter what section they're in, is way more than they would get otherwise. I mean, you know, we're making films here, it's like a group of friends in a town that most people have never heard of for very little money. You know, and the fact that they're here and people are seeing it and we're getting interviews and, you know, the eyes are on these films, it just feels like the film itself has taken a huge step up towards entering, you know, the public knowledge. Because um, these films are getting exposure, we're able to attract interest from other people, which is, which is the true blessing of being in, in, in this festival. As a filmmaker, I suppose my job is to make the film. What's done with the film and how it's seen afterwards is the industry part of it. And <clears throat> I have a say in it, but the circumstances, that's the nature of cinema, the circumstances have always been dictated by the industry. That's the interface, you know. You were talking about other technological changes in, in, in the art of film and in the industry of film and how, you know, they've been weathered in the past, right? This one is rather larger than the earlier ones, I would say. Big topic. <laughs>